Harry here and we're going to look at starting off the farm accounts. Um, the key to success on farm accounts is actually the initial structure, how you start it off. Usually we would recommend to a farmer to start off on the first day of their current financial year. So if you're in March of 2010 and your year starts in January 2010, then starting off in January 2010 is a logical thing to do. It doesn't make sense to go back to try January 2009 because you're taking on too much work because you have to go all the way through 09 and then to 010. So try and start off in the current year. The main thing that you need to start off on accounts would be all of your bank statements. So if you're in March of 2010, you'd need your current account bank statement for January, February and possibly March if we already have it. You'd also need to know the banks that you had on the 1st of January 2010. So uh, at the 1st of January 2010 you'd have your current account but you might also have other borrowings, leases, higher purchases. So it would be important to get all of those onto the program in the setup section. So that's what we're going to do first. We're going to show you how to put the bank accounts on. It's very important to get all of the bank accounts on because if you don't get the bank accounts on you can't do your bank transfers right because you know, if you have a loan, you're paying off the loan through the current account once a month. So if you don't have the, the, the borrowing on, you can't do your bank transfer right. So I just click down here on New, and I'll say that I have a, a John Deere um, loan. And you could go AIB just to identify who it's with. Um, in here, I have, uh, what type is this? I'll say it's a loan account. Uh, you don't necessarily have to put the um, account in, that'd be more for your account, but if you want to put the account number so there'll be no confusion whatsoever as to what it is. And then if I click in here and I put in that the balance is minus 12,000. So that means that um, on the bank statement for the end of the, say, let's say you're starting off in January 2010, so that would mean that um, you owed exactly 12,000 euro on the bank statement for that particular loan account on the 1st of January 2010. So I click Save, so you can see that you've put your second uh, bank account on. So if I go New again, and um, leases and hard purchases are really the same, th the same, done in the same way because they're just another form of borrowing. So if you have a, a Jeep um, lease, same thing, it's a, a borrowing. So I'll drop down the menu. There's three types, there's current, deposit and loan. Uh, again, you don't have to put in the account number, but if you want, it'll help the accountant mainly to make sure there's no confusion. And if you want to say that you owed that amount of money on the 1st of January 2010, again, assuming that 1st of January 2010 is our start date. So save that. Now, it actually can take you a little bit of time to get all of these bank accounts and have them all lined up for the first month of your accounts here. So you do need to pull all of those together and don't leave any of them behind. We need to have them all here. Now, just initially what I should do is put my opening balance on my current account. So uh, if I come in here, I'll say that I owed 2,200. If I was in the, if my current account was in the black, I would go like that. So I'm just saying that that's the, so that would be the balance as per the bank st statement. So if you looked at your bank statement for January 2010, and you looked at the top of that uh, bank statement for January 2010, that would be the opening balance that would be printed at the top of the bank statement. So I'll just go save there. And you see now we have our current account and we have two loan accounts ready to go. They've all got the exact balance as per the first day of your accounts here. And that's a big thing to get done straight away because to do that right, you have to have all of your statements for all of your current accounts, all of your loan accounts, all of your deposit accounts. So close out of there. The next thing that we get into straight away is customers and suppliers. So if I come in here, the, the absolutely there's one critical thing to be familiar with here, and it's how to handle bills and invoices. And if you look at the, just up at the top here, see this column here, use bill stroke invoices. Notice the way at the moment they're all in as no. Now because all of the people we're dealing with, we've said no, we don't want to have bills and invoices. That means that you're doing the farm accounts here purely as cash accounts. Which means that, you know, if you get a bill from somebody, you don't put it on the program because you simply wait until you write those people a check. Um, so that's what bills and invoices mean. If we wanted to track, say, Plan B here, let's say that it's, we find that there's so much trading going on with Plan B, we do feel that we need to track all of their bills as they come in. 
So what you do in that case is you go new, or sorry, in this case we go change because land view is already there. And you see this tick box down here. It's probably the most important thing in the accounts to understand this principle. If you if you try and do too much bills and invoices, it'll slow you down big time. So you have to do as little bills and invoices as you can as you want, as you can get away with. Because with farm accounts, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in most farms and you don't have the luxury of having extra detail. You just want to get the job done as efficiently as you can. Now obviously if you're VAT registered then you do need to track bills and invoices because if you're VAT registered and you pay your VAT based on the bills and invoices then you have to put the bills and invoices on. It's simply extra paperwork you have to do if you're a VAT registered farm. But most farms are not VAT registered and most farms would logically want to do cash accounts as much as they can but they would make the effort to track the bills and invoices, particularly on the bigger companies that they do a lot of business with. Um, you know, if you have a, a local merchant where you're constantly going in and out and getting feed and fertilizer and fencing posts and all sorts of products from their store, there's a constant stream of stuff coming from them. And it's very easy to get confused about what you owe them and, you know, when, am I, when do I need to pay them or whatever. So tracking all of those bills as they come on makes a lot of sense. Now, if I put a new business on here, let's say that there's another... Uh, merchant in the local area that um, you do a lot of transactions with. So let's call him the local merchant. All of the other information you don't need, but this again is the big one. We, you're going to make the commitment to track all the bills and invoices, which means you're going to have a lot more work with this person. But one of the big advantages of putting all the bills on from the local merchant as they come in is when you the computer will always know what you owe them. So if you come into the software and say, look, what do I owe the local merchant? Assuming you've put all the bills on as they come in, then the farm software will know exactly what you owe them. And then when you write a check to pay them off, you don't have to say what it's for because you've already broken down the bills as they come in. So you just have to write a check for two and a half thousand against all of the outstanding bills that came in from the local merchant. So save that. So we would always recommend, see in this case here we have two businesses that we're tracking on bills and invoices. So for your average dairy or beef or dry stock farm, we would say, look, you should be your local co-op, your the your milk co-op, maybe a, a one other big supplier, but don't do any more than that. It doesn't make sense to track bills and invoices with too many people because it just cr it's more work. It's obviously great detail and you appreciate the detail, but if you don't have the time for detail, don't do it. So if in doubt, say no to bills and invoices. And that's the biggest thing that can make a difference in terms of you doing accounts quickly or doing accounts less quickly.